Solving nonlinear inequalities is a little bit different than solving linear inequalities. We can just use algebra for these. Uh, if you see something like this, you're going to find the answers. What you would normally do would be to take over the 2 and divide by 3, and then you just get x is greater than uh, 2 thirds, and away you go. But with this thing over here, when it's, uh, when it's nonlinear, it's kind of a different animal. The uh, rules for equations, they kind of go out the window when you're solving any inequalities. For example, when you go to solve this, you might be tempted to say, okay, bring over the 2 and divide by 3, which leaves students with this, with uh, 2 thirds. And then what do you do after that? A lot of the times I get x uh, is greater than the square root of 2 thirds, but plus or minus. But what does that actually mean, right? There are two different numbers here. Is x greater than 1 or both? What's the story? The way that we have for solving these is I call the number line solution, the number line method. We're going to start it out with a, lin with a regular uh, linear inequality, which we could solve just with regular a algebra, but apply this uh, number line method to other more complicated things. What I'd like you to do is, you, you have this expression on this side. What you've got to do is, See, you see what values of x make that zero? And the answer is 5. If you take x5, it's going to be zero. Now you, you have to think. If x is larger than 5, then x minus 5 is going to be a positive number. And so we're going to write down positive here, because if x is in this region, the value of the thing is going to be positive. And if x is less than 5, numbers less than 5 minus 5 are negative. So we put a negative sign. And what we have here is like a graphical description of what the solutions are. You can see that we want it greater than zero. The expression is greater than zero here, and hence the answer is x is greater than five, which of course we could have gotten with algebra, but you cannot just do algebra on something more complicated like this. What do you do here? A common um, answer that I would get for something like this would be the students say x plus 2 is greater than 0 and x minus 1 is greater than 0. Again, what does that mean? Um, this is incorrect because numbers, values of x that make this um, positive will not necessarily also make that positive. So it's about the sign of the, of, of the, of the product. So what I do is draw out a number line for each of your uh, factors here. At 1, all right, for this one is uh, at 1, it's 0. If number is greater than 1 plugged in, it's going to be positive and negative over here. Then you do the same thing with the other factor. Uh, at minus 2, its value is 0. If x is greater than that, it's going to be positive. If x is less than that, it's going to be negative. Then you draw out a third one for their product. Now look at this. If x is greater than 1, well first of all, you mark off where it's 0. This um, multiplication will be 0 if x is minus 2, right now 0, or if x is 1. If x is greater than 1, you look at the sign of the, the factors. Both factors are positive, hence their product is positive. We get plus there. When you cross over 1, you see this factor changes sign. And so now, uh, it's negative in this region. This thing, it, this one will still be positive. So you'll have negative times positive, which is negative. It's going to change the uh, sign. Then when you go past minus 2, both of the factors are negative. So their product is going to be positive again. So you just look at the chart and say, all right, well, the, where is this greater than 0? It's greater than 0, where x is less than minus 2 or where x is greater than 1. That's the final thing. Something at one step up from that would be this. What happens here? Something different happens when they occur in powers like this. You're still going to want to write out a sign chart for it. So for x squared, at 0 is 0. If x is positive, x squared is positive. But x squared is also positive if x is negative 2. So it's positive there as well. Play the same game with the 3, all right? At 3, x minus 3 is 0. If x is greater than 3, positive, less than 3, it's going to be negative. And now look at the effect that that has on the final product. If x is greater than 3, 
both factors are positive, so their product is positive. If you cross over three, this factor changes sign, making the whole thing negative. Now, but when you cross over zero, when you would normally be expecting another sign change, this factor did not get a chance to change sign because it had a square on it. All right? This thing is always going to be positive. You see, in going from this side to this side, the only factor that had a chance to change the sign of the product was the x squared because the x minus 3 had already undergone its own, its own sign change. But because it's squared, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay positive and the sign chart won't change across zero, so you do not have a sign change there. It's going to be negative uh, all back here. So the solution to this would be x is less than zero and x is between zero and three. Generally speaking, the rule is once you have the problem factored out and you want to solve the inequality, you look at the factors that appear an odd number of times. And the zeros that with an odd number of uh, that have an odd power attached to them, they will incur a sign change in your chart. And the ones that appear an even number of times, you won't get a sign change. As a last example of that, how to use this quickly, we want to solve this. Mark down where it's zero. It's zero at zero. It's zero at two. And it's zero at three. <clears throat> you pick a number over here, greater than, than three, all of the three factors are, are going to be positive, so the product is positive. Will we get a sign change across three? Yes, because it appears an odd number of times. This factor will change sign going over here, thus changing the sign of the whole thing. Will we get a sign change across two? No, because this x minus two factor doesn't change sign over here, so no sign change. Will we get a sign change across zero? Yes because it appears an odd number of times.